From WFSB, this is an Eyewitness News Update. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nicole Nalep, and here are your top headlines on this Tuesday, August 15th. We follow developing news now in Hartford, where the city is now up to its 28th homicide. And this comes after a man was shot and killed right by the intersection of Granby Street and Tower Avenue. Police say a driver was shot by someone in another car, and the hurt driver ended up crashing, hitting a telephone pole before stopping. Officials believe that this was a targeted attack and that the victim's identity has not yet been released. This morning, investigators will be searching for any video evidence that can ha help them catch the killer. And we are continuing to cover a story that broke overnight, where an off-duty Hartford police officer was accused of sexual assault. Investigators say Justin Damone sexually assaulted someone at Ballard's Beach Club on Block Island. We know that he is a four-year veteran of the department. Now, a Hartford police spokesperson said, quote, Chief Thody immediately opened an internal affairs investigation, and the officer was suspended without pay pending the criminal and administrative investigations. We are also tracking breaking news now as former President Donald Trump has been indicted for a fourth time. Trump faces 13 new charges for his alleged role in attempting to overturn election results in Georgia. Now, these new charges are in addition to the 78 criminal charges that are already stacked up against him. 18 of Trump's allies have also been charged, including Rudy Giuliani. And Trump has until next Friday, August 25th, to surrender. And we're also following up on last week's $6 million cyber attack on New Haven Public Schools. Board of Ed member Darnell Goldson is now questioning the city's preparedness. And this morning, the mayor is firing back. While Goldson says that the city is behind on cybersecurity protocols, Mayor Justin Elliker says that he has made sure to implement safety measures during his time as mayor and that this recent hack is a sign of just an unfortunate reality. So far, the city has recovered just over three and a half million dollars of the six million dollars that was stolen. And we now know the identity of a man who was shot and killed on 84 in in Hartford and police say 36 year old Omar Cruz Torres died after he was shot by someone in another vehicle last Friday. 35 year old Nelson Alejandro Capo was also seriously hurt. That incident took place around 2 p.m. So if you have any information on it, please call Hartford police. Police are also investigating a hate crime at Trinity Church in Newtown. Investigators say that someone damaged and removed two pride flags on welcome signs right at the front and the back of the church. The crime took place sometime early Sunday morning, and now police are asking anyone with any information to give them a call. Also happening today, local leaders in Killingly will be sharing details on a new plan to transform three rundown properties. An $800,000 grant will be used to conduct environmental tests on the following locations. The Belouville Mill, the former Danielson Putnam Twin Drive-In, and the Old Borough Wastewater Treatment Site. Also happening today, DJ Hernandez will be appearing in court again. Hernandez ended up missing a court date in July and instead drove his ex's car to Yukon to map out the campus for an alleged school shooting. He's also accused of driving to Brown University to do the same thing. Hernandez now faces a breach of peace charge. And today, Connecticut State students, faculty, and staff will be discussing how budget cuts are impacting student services. Some of the Connecticut State capital budget cuts include getting rid of cafeteria services for the campus, cutting library staff, which closes the state capital library on weekends and evenings, and getting rid of the Office of Career Services. So the discussion all starts at 11 this morning. All right, Scott, that early warning weather alert is out. And is the rain officially out now, yet? Uh, not quite. Warning weather. Oh, sorry, man. That's okay. We're we'll talking over to the man. Uh, 704 is now the time. As you can see, we do have some moderate rain still coming down in parts of northern Litchfield County. A little bit of yellow and orange there, but no lightning, no thunder. And the rain is just moderate at this point, according to the only live Doppler radar in Connecticut. Flood watch in effect for Hartford, Tolland, and Wyndham. This is until further notice. I'm expecting it to expire before 11 o'clock. We just have to wait and see. We did have a deluge earlier this morning. As you can see, we had bright colors passing through, especially parts of northeast and southeast Connecticut and parts of southwest Connecticut, where
where we picked up over an inch of rain, another inch of rain, which we just don't need in the state. Now, as I take you out a little bit further, the satellite and radar confirms lightning and thunder to our south and east. They can keep it. We don't need that here, and it looks like we're not going to get it. So the th severe threat was for this morning. That has diminished, which is good news. Now, the day ahead, we're talking about temperatures only in the low to mid-70s with maybe a passing shower. But uh, for the most part, the rain is going to start winding down by mid to late morning. More of the same for the immediate shoreline. 6 p.m., there could be a passing shower with temperatures in the upper 70s. That's cool for this time of year. We got to 84 yesterday. That's exactly where we should be. That's why it's shaded in gray. Today, we're going to be shaded in the blue as we're going to be cooler. Little bit of sunshine trying to break through in Old Saybrook this morning. Hello. Still some liquid on the lens in Torrington as you guys are dealing with some rain right now. New Haven, it's just overcast, but again, there are some breaks in the clouds. And look at some of the breaks in New London. 71 degrees with the wind out of the east, northeast at 11. So let's take a look at early morning future cast tomorrow's weather today. Notice the rain scoots on out. We're under mostly cloudy skies, maybe a passing shower this afternoon through this evening, but just for the most part, it is mostly cloudy. And then tomorrow, we're dealing with some scattered, uh, a passing shower, but we could also see some partial sunshine during the day, which is good news, but you'll notice the little green blobs, so there could be a passing shower tomorrow. Insignificant, we're not putting it on the seven-day forecast, all right? And then your temperatures out there right now are in the upper 60s, which is above average, 63, 64, the typical overnight low. We're in the mid to upper 60s, low 70s, but again, don't forget the numbers don't go too far during the day today. Winds are out of the south and east, uh, north and east. Uh, you've got it 6 to 13 to 10. To, look at this, 22 mile an hour sustained wind in Bridgeport. It is a bit breezy out there in parts of the state. Dew points are in the mid to upper 60s as well, so it is a bit on the muggy side. So here are your headlines. Rain this morning, mostly cloudy today, and then a stray shower during the day tomorrow, another stray shower during the day on Thursday. Now, it is going to be a fairly cooler day than average, 73 to 78, wet start with mostly cloudy skies, but those temperatures will start to come up. Here's the breakdown, 74 to 77, 73 for Putnam. How cool is that for August 15th? Whoa. Morning rain giving way to mostly cloudy skies. Your overnight lows tonight are in the mid-60s, mainly cloudy with a passing shower. Dew points will still be in the uh, upper 50s, low 60s. And then tomorrow and Thursday, okay days, not the best, not the worst. A little humid on Thursday, but a cold front rolls through on Friday, and that'll lower the humidity. And look at how delightful the upcoming weekend looks. Saturday, Sunday, and even into Monday, looking terrific with partly to mostly sunny skies and temperatures in the mid-80s. That's a check of your early morning forecast. Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. And thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on your Tuesday. Tuesday. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on that Channel 3 app. Have a great day, everyone. Be healthy, stay positive.